Hi hey guys, it's Keith Arkmerk Farms. It is the oh, end of the first going on the second week of November 2020. And let me tell you, it is warm out here. It's still, I don't know, 60, almost 70 degrees is gonna get up today. And it's gonna stick that way here for the next couple days. And then it's gonna actually go cold again and hopefully it'll stay cold, but we'll see on that. But today, on top of the new building going in, which got the pad built now, all the trees are gone. So you can see the uh, caterpillar shed down there. My last video, the make way for expansion. I moved that caterpillar shed down. It was like right in here-ish, and there was a whole tree line. You see all the little sticks sticking up that came all the way through here and all the way back around and down through there towards the tunnel. Those have all been torn out and we got the uh, pad ready to go. But now for the next thing, which was originally quite a few weeks back, I had mentioned another project we were getting ready to start that I was super excited about is all these flags out here. We're gonna start a permaculture orchard. So let me show you what the plan is for it. So for setting up this orchard, the first thing I did was set a couple stakes. I got one here and one further down. I actually went and measured from here off of the fence because I know that fence is good and straight north-south. And then I eyeballed down the two of them and set another stake oh, way down there in the distance. You really can't see it, it's quite a ways off. I did that to make sure I have a nice straight line connecting this post and this post but it follows my main electric fence line right there that way everything looks straight on the land and the building will also be straight with it as well because it's actually getting sighted off of the end of these beds here i've got another line of stakes running out across the field where all of the uh bird houses and stuff are so i went around set those and then I came in two feet that's my first tree green be nitrogen next would be a fruit tree then a fruit tree then another nitrogen fixer so maybe I should go back and explain a little bit of that now the whole basis behind a permaculture orchard is the trio. Uh, Steven Subakowski, I know I butchered his last name, has a YouTube channel. Check it out. It's actually pretty cool. That's where I'm getting a lot of this orchard stuff from. He believes in planting things out in trios, which would be two fruit trees and a nitrogen fixer, like a honey locust or a black locust, or I've even found golden rain trees work possibly, as long as you get them to go up and not all over the place. So I already had a couple trees which I've got in the ground already. This is one that was bought for me this year. It's a pear tree. But I dropped in my pear, and then I'll have a nitrogen fixer, and I'll have another fruit tree. And in between each of these trees, so I'll say from the nitrogen fixer back over here to the pear, we are supposed to have two bushes, which can be berry bush, it can be uh, asparagus, which gets kind of tall, just any kind of low bush that grows good in your region, or even a nitrogen fixing bush would be even better. And then 10 perennials in between here as well. So from here down across the ground to here, we'd have 10 perennials. So I've actually been saving up some stock for perennials. Um, we can do things like, again, some types of berry bushes. We can do um different varieties of herbs 
strawberries maybe for a little while. The idea is mainly to have something that grows that you don't have to take care of. That's the whole idea with this permaculture orchard. You plant it, go out and maybe do some trimming of trees and then just harvest from it. So let me show you the main game plan here. And here is my game plan. I had to come over here into one of my tunnels. Got some nice lettuce getting ready for winter. But back to this. So what I did was purchase some bare root trees. I got them from groworganic.com. They come from the Stark Orchard. They will be shipped in uh, mid to late December. Yeah, early January. That should give me time to plant. But I went ahead and got very specific trees. Here's a list. I've got the other apple, which was the one I had planted out in the field, which turned out to be a Macintosh, which I'm not too happy about. Then I'm getting a Granny Smith, a Honey Locust, a Gala. Those are my apples. And then for peaches, I got Muir and Frost. I've also got another pear, which I originally thought was a Bartlett, but it's actually an Ayers. Then I've got a Seckle pear coming in, which is a European pear. I got an Italian plum and a Pluot coming in as well. Those are the trees that I actually, uh, the money I made from Mother Earth News Fair this year for doing their winter gardening video, I used that to buy these trees. They were $25 a piece. I'm also gonna need seven honey locust trees. I also have some other trees coming over. I bought a lot earlier this year. They're uh, multigraph trees. So the apples and pears and peaches all have multiple different things on each of them. But here is the orchard plan. I was going to do it in 90 foot blocks because that seems to be the game plan out here. But I'm doing 15 foot in between row, 12 foot in between tree. And what I'm doing again, we've got nitrogen, fruit, fruit, nitrogen, fruit, fruit, nitrogen. We'll just continue that down the line. Then you stagger them as well. So we can do it this way. Nitrogen, fruit, fruit, nitrogen, or go diagonal. And nitrogen, fruit, fruit, nitrogen. So no matter what, there's a nitrogen tree with fruit trees basically surrounding it. Anywhere you go in the orchard. That way, they actually fix the nitrogen for the species themselves. So from down here, I went and got the approximate harvest dates for, uh, I think it was a California region, but it doesn't matter. Those are still basically the way they'll stagger out through the year. I then went over to here and tried to set it up in a grocery store shopping type method. So the Granny Smith and the Muir should be near each other along with the other apple of the time that they're ready to harvest. Same thing with the pear, the pluot, and the peach. So hopefully you can just walk down here and you'll have choices. Same thing over here, the honey crisp, the seckle pear, and what turned out to be the other red delicious. Oh, that's a tree I thought I had, which I don't, which means I'm probably gonna have to buy another tree for there. And a plum. These should all be ready near the same time. That's a red delicious is what I think I estimated what its uh, date was, was similar to the rest of these, which the Italian peach, so we're looking at late August, early September-ish. Same thing over here. The gala, the mirror, and the honey. Those are all early August to mid-August. So hopefully it'll work out to where you can just go down each row and know what's in season. Now, in between the trees, I'm going to use landscape fabric. I'm gonna run, I haven't decided if I'm gonna do four foot or three foot, but I'm gonna bury the outside edge and have the inside overlap where the trees are. That way I can keep the weeds down and not have to worry about it. And then plant my other trees in between, or bushes and uh, perennials inside of the gap in the fabric. That way there's no weeds. I can easily mow. I'm gonna bury the outside edge so I'm not gonna use a bunch of landscape pins. Maybe have a few in between to hold it together. So that's the plan. This is a great thing about doing these videos is that if I ever lose this piece of paper, I have it right here in the video. 
Now, like I said again, if you haven't ever heard anything about the permaculture orchard idea, just go to YouTube and look up permaculture orchard. You'll find very good videos by the permaculture orchards. Uh, Steven, what did I say, Subakowski or something like that. Really good videos, a lot of information in it. He doesn't reveal everything through it because he's got other classes where he charges you money for, of course. But you get the basic idea of it. Now, the whole idea of this is to start harvesting fruit here in a couple years. I know it's small. There's only going to be 12 trees in here, I believe, maybe 15. So it's not going to be a huge orchard to start with. But hopefully we can get enough to sell at market. Then the next step is, this next year as well, I've got a brush pile down there from the old tree line i got to take care of. I'm going to continue this over that direction and work all the way down. And also carry on more rows over here because I've only got one, two, three, four rows right now. I'll continue over at least another five, six, seven. And then, with that many trees, I can start a U-Pick orchard out here as well. I have to do a little bit of grass management every now and then, mowing in between them, you know, possibility of uh, harvesting what comes up in between, a bunch of other things. The building down here is going to really help us out with that as well. But for now, like I said, I just had a pear that was in a pot I needed to get planted. Had this old apple tree up front that I planted five or six years ago. It never took hold actually, really poor. I hope it works because it's actually kind of brought it down here at the bottom as well. But here's one cool thing to do with these. They sell these little metal tags. They're aluminum. You stencil what's on them. Well, basically you write on them what's on them. And they got stainless steel wires that you can hang from your tree. That way, you know what trees what when you come back and look at these things even next year to kind of know which cultivars are doing best in your area and what you need to continue buying or grafting and getting more fruit trees that way so hope you all like what you saw today if you did don't forget to like and subscribe thank y'all have a good day